in recent years um, has worked with Randy Knight on a, on a textbook, and that's been really fantastic because Randy is a creative and very, very cool guy. And this is a, a picture from um, uh, a chapter on electricity and, and, and magnetism and electromagnetic waves. Here's a, a flower in regular light, here's a picture of ultraviolet, so we have these pigments which show up. There are animals which can sense the ultraviolet, we can't, and here's why. The rods and cones in your eye can sense ultraviolet. They can also sense infrared. The tail of the visible light spectrum, there's a long tail that goes off in the infrared, particularly red cones can sense it. Ken tells me he can see out to a thousand nanometers if it's a bright enough source. But you can easily see out to 800 nanometers or 850. And if you use the infrared goggles, you can see that. That's kind of a long tail. You just have to get rid of the other light and you can see it. But this end right here, this is a hard edge. This is like 400 nanometers. You can see 410. You can't see 390. Why is there the hard edge? It's not about your rods and cones. It's the lens in your eye. When you came in, you had a chance to pick up a little ultraviolet flashlight. Here's what I want you to do. You work with a partner on this. Take your little ultraviolet flashlight. And you want to shine it in your, in your partner's eye. <laughs> and the lens inside the person's eye fluoresces. And you'll see a glowing green thing inside the person's eyeball. And what is it? Yeah. The yeah. lens inside their eye. It fluoresces. And it's a little bright, so I apologize for that in advance. Yep. Yep. There it is. <laughs> you gotta make the lens real close. called a fakia. Then you don't have the lens, and then we have these glasses, which were designed to kind of like correct for the focusing part of the glass. 20 diopters, okay? And so there's like seriously thick lenses to make this go, and um, you can get the glasses like so. But now they put artificial lenses in, but depending on the kind of lens that you have, it might transmit ultraviolet light. So Art and Ron in one eye and my mother have superpowers. They can see, <laughs> they can see beyond the ultraviolet end of the spectrum. They can see beyond the ultraviolet end of the spectrum. And, and if you have a lens, they, and, and this is good, you have to kind of like find happy things about growing older and having <laughs> you know? And this is, this is a serious plus, I think, that I'm kind of like looking forward to someday. We've had 20 years of Little Shop of Physics. Every year there's a theme for the, 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 the shows that we do, and, and there's kind of a guiding principle, and we use it to kind of develop new projects that we do, and, and these have been a bunch that we have. If you look at the back of our shirts, every year is, is a different theme. This past year was It's About Time. We're going to go sh show a couple of things from the It's About Time year, and this is going to help me out with the first one. And we're going to have David Cook is going to be our volunteer. <laughs> And we're going to do a reaction time demonstration. And you're going to go ahead and come over to this side, David, and you're going to work with Nissa. And this is going to drop this block, and you're going to hold your arms out, and you're going to try to catch it. And if he's fast, he's going to catch it in like the blue or the green, and not so fast, maybe up in the red. And here, and here we go. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Now, wait a minute. We're going to put some goggles on him. And this is going to dim the light that comes into his eyes. Now he's getting like about 5% as many photons. I can't see a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. 
He's got it. Okay, and there we go. And now? Oh, not so fast now. It's simple physics, actually. Let's thank David for that. When there's fewer photons coming in, right? Basically, you have to have this kind of reporting problem, not like rods and cones and everything have to like weigh in. And if there's not as much light coming in, it takes you longer to respond to it. That's why driving, driving at night, your reaction time's longer because your reaction time's longer. <laughs> and ultimately, it, it, it's about time. It takes more time. Oh, heavens to Betsy, you have glasses that you're handed on the way in with one dark lens and one light lens. This makes something called the Pofrick illusion. Sherry's going to help me out with this. One dark lens, one light lens. One eye takes longer to perceive the existence of an object than the other. And so if an object is moving across your visual field, your two eyes think it's in two different places, and it gives you a three-dimensional illusion. Sherry's going to move this back and forth across the hamster, which is making a position reference. And go ahead and try this with the glasses off, and then glasses on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Now, this is getting rather close to me, and I was like, it's looking pretty, whoa! And then we're going to try We'll face this way for these folks. Oh yeah, and now we're going to turn this way. Do it for these folks. And you get this 3D. And why? It's about time. It's about time. And I ask my students to calculate, okay, tell me, which way should, if I want to make it go this way, which lens should be the dark lens? So they have to think about which way it's moving and think about the timing and think about, oh, where's the image on your retina? Oh, yeah, and it's inverted, too. And so it's a really kind of good problem to try to sort this out. The first 3D movies weren't these fancy pants glasses that you see, you get at, like, uh, uh, Avatar or whatever. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Pulp freak lenses. And you get the apparent 3D-ness of the kids going on the merry-go-round. The types of things that we've shown here, if you want to see more of this, we have stuff this afternoon set up. You can see the Little Shop of Physics display, HC3023B, upstairs, 345 to 515. Concluding lessons. Everything you need to know about science teaching, I learned in kindergarten. These are my take-home messages. This is what I've taken away from my 20 years of doing the Little Shop of Physics. <coughs> Quarter of a million kids, half a million hands. 2,500 staff, volunteers, friends of the Law Shop of Physics. It's been a great ride. And I want, I, I, I want to thank the AAPT and the Colorado Wyoming section, the AAPT and the staff of the Law Shop of Physics. And everybody, thank you so much. questions to visit with Brian this afternoon. His timing was absolutely perfect if forestalling questions was the objective. <laughs> I'm sure that wasn't the objective. <laughs>